What's up, guys? Welcome back to Biopilot Arms. Today I have an excerpt from my After Work podcast. If you would like to go and see that, go ahead over to Biopilot News and you can see the full podcast there. Otherwise, enjoy the video. So, <clears throat> normally, you know, felons who are convicted of crimes aren't allowed to have firearms because the, the Constitution says that through due process you can strip someone of their rights. And we've taken that to mean that felons, no matter what, once they are stripped of their rights, they pretty much don't get them back. There are a few instances where you can have your rights restored, but there's a lot of paperwork involved. There's a lot of things that you have to do and pay for in order to get your rights back. However, that may not be the case for everyone anymore. You see, uh, a man convicted of nonviolent crime can own a gun, the U.S. court rules. Now, pretty much, uh, federal appeals court ruled on Tuesday, the man who committed a nonviolent crime cannot be legally prevented from owning a firearm. A potential setback to gun regulations spurred by a Supreme Court ruling last year that vastly expanded the right to bear arms. In an 11-4 ruling, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit in Philadelphia overturned court decisions against Brian Range, a Pennsylvania res resident who had sued the state after being blocked from buying a shotgun over a conviction for lying on a benefits application in the 1990s. In a majority opinion, Judge Thomas M. Hardiman repeatedly cited the Supreme Court ruling last June in which the majority established a new standard that dictated the gun laws uh, conform to historical tradition dating back to the 18th and 19th centuries. In sum, we reject the government's contention that only law-abiding responsible citizens are counted among the people protected by the Second Amendment. Uh, it is unclear whether the ruling applies in, to similar cases involving the people who have committed low-level crimes or whether it will have broader impact. He had brought the case for the benefit of my client only and said he believed it would make its way to the Supreme Court if the Justice Department is unwise enough to appeal. Now, Judge Hardman wrote that his opinion was narrow, pertaining only to cases involving nonviolent crime convictions with relatively lengthy potential prison sentences. Three judges concurring with the majority wrote that the decision does not spell doom for a section of federal law that strips gun ownership from anyone convicted in any court of a crime punishable by imprisonment for a term exceeding one year. Uh, we expect that the vast majority of those convicted of felonies will continue to be pro prohibited from possessing firearms, as another federal court of appeals ruled just days ago. But in a sharply worded dissent, dissent an Obama appointee to the third court predicted the majority opinion would set a broad and dangerous precedent. While my colleagues state that their opinion is narrow, the an analytical framework they have applied to reach their conclusion renders most, if not all, felon bans unconstitutional. No matter the sweep of the ruling, Judge Hardiman's opinion directly addressed many of the core issues raised in the Supreme Court's decision last June in expansive language that seemed to suggest that the constitutional foundation of many gun laws was eroding. Yeah, because a lot of these gun laws are not constitutional. The judge wrote that punishing Mr. Range by revoking his gun rights for an offense that did not involve violence gave lawmakers too much power to manipulate the Second Amendment by labeling as a criminal some like <clears throat> someone like Mr. Range who led an otherwise law-abiding life. Under federal laws, people convicted of state or federal crimes that are punishable by more than a year in prison are barred from buying weapons. Uh, in Pennsylvania, such a ban takes effect after convici conviction on misdemeanor that has a potential sentence of at least a year. In his, in his welfare fraud conviction, he faced a maximum penalty of five years in prison but received probation. So what they're saying basically is, even if you don't get sent to prison, if you were con if, if whatever you did would have resulted in you going to prison for more than a year, even if you get, you get probation or whatever, then you shouldn't own a gun. However, this court says no. So, but it just goes on to say a couple more things. But essentially, 
This is good. For more than one reason. Number one, if you are convicted of a crime, right, and you served your time, you are basically you're basically deprived of your rights most of your rights not all of them but most of your rights are deprived while you are in prison you are not able to do things you are st stuck obeying everything that is told of you to do you have no privacy you have no private property you uh don't have a right to have a firearm but in general you don't have access to a lot of your rights while you are in prison right once you are released from prison you're supposed to have your rights back but for felons you don't for a lot of the time felons can't vote you can't have a gun you 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 uh can't do certain things while you are out now my belief is once you have done your time once you have served your sentence, you should get all your rights back, no matter what. And that includes for violent criminals, for, for violent felons. And the reason I say that is because two things. One, if you are so violent that they think that you might reoffend, then why are you not in prison still? The whole point to prison is to keep the public safe. If you think that this person who committed this violent crime might reoffend, why does he not have a longer sentence? Why are there not better reformation programs in prison? So if you think that he shouldn't get his full rights back, then he shouldn't he's a danger to the public and he shouldn't be in public. That simple, right? Because if they have done their time and they are back out, they should get their full rights. Now, I can see the argument for violent criminals. Be like, hey, listen, you know, this is what he was given for time-wise. And once he's out, we, you know, part of the condition for being released is <clears throat> not having your rights back. Fine. But for non-violent criminals, such as this guy, I have never seen a good argument for keeping them from having guns. They never hurt anybody. They they never used the supposed weapon in any type of crime ever. So the fact that nonviolent uh, felons never got their gun rights back never made sense to me. So the fact that this court is coming in and saying, hey, look, based on the tradition of this history, the, the tradition and history of this nation, nonviolent criminals, you know what? They, they get their rights back. Good. Good. Because they never should have had the rights uh, taken and, and well, because they should have gotten their rights back as soon as they were released from prison. It never should have continued. Now, obviously, you know, uh, because he was given probation instead of an actual prison sentence, I would say for the period of his probation, even though he's not in prison, then it's fine during that period for him not to be able to got, buy a gun because he's on probation. I mean, you can't do a lot of things when you're on probation or parole. You can't, you know, drink alcohol, you can't do drugs, you can't have a gun, blah, 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 blah. And that's fine because the condition of you not being locked in a jail cell is that you don't do these things or the crime that you were accused of during the probationary period, right? So that makes sense. So for the time of your probation, early parole, whatever, for that time period, you don't get your rights because, you know, it's like we're being lenient and letting you not rot in prison. That's fine. But once the probationary, probation period, the parole period, the, the sentencing period is over, you should get your full rights back. That's just my opinion. But, you know what, you know, everybody has their own opinion. So, you know, you guys uh, drop a comment down below and let me know what your opinion is on this. Do you think that felons should get the rights back uh, no matter what crime they committed? Or do you think that it should only be those like this, in this case, the non-violent non offenders uh, should get the rights back, but that violent offenders should still uh, have their rights restricted? You tell me in the comments below and let me know.